Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History, Chapter 2, Episode 2, The Mystery of the Western Message Petroglyphs. Throughout the wild west of America, you can find thousands of petroglyphs. Every now and then, you will stumble across a set that looks different than the rest. The Western Message petroglyphs are a series of mysterious picture writings found at at least 39 sites across eight different states. Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, California, and Idaho. These sites contain hieroglyph-like writings that use a mixture of Native American, Mayan, Egyptian, Chinese, and other Old World symbols. Near Fillmore, Utah, one site has an information panel listing different theories of origin. Some of these theories include Aztec refugees, who were escaping the Spanish north with Montezuma's gold. Others believe that these were Mayan waypoints, because some of the symbols closely resemble Mayan hieroglyphs. Some point to Spanish explorers due to their location near 18th century Spanish trails. Perhaps the most infamous and controversial theory of origin is Nephite clues, or the idea that these were created by one of the lost tribes of Israel as a code that led to buried treasure. We're going to talk more about this theory in just a moment. The first documentation of the site was in 1939 when a local miner named Clifford Purcell was prospecting with a friend in the foothills outside of Fillmore, Utah. As they searched the area for ore, Purcell stumbled upon the now infamous Chalk Creek hieroglyphs. He described the discovery in an interview he gave on the subject in 1982, where he said that the petroglyphs were full of lichen and green stuff, and that the sun was shining on it like a spotlight, where it became visible that the lichens almost filled all the grooves. Lichen is a fungus that grows over many, many years and decades on rocks. Decades later, a man named Jose de Vila moved from Mexico City to Utah, where he became deeply interested in the Chalk Creek hieroglyphs. De Vila was a Mormon, and he believed that they were a coded message that led to treasure, and that they could prove that one of the lost tribes of Israel had made it to the Americas. According to the Book of Mormon, the Lamanites and Nephites were two groups of Israelites who were led by God to the ancient Americas and are believed to be the ancestors of Native American peoples. Mormons view the Lamanites and Nephites as representatives of two different paths in life, the disobedient path represented by the Lamanites and the obedient path represented by the Nephites. Judy Hilbish, who wrote the book Stone Diary, Solving the Mystery of the Western Message Petroglyphs, describes in her book how Davila used his previous knowledge of Egyptian and Mesoamerican symbology to provide a translation that he believed was the key to finding a buried treasure. After his translation started to draw attention, Davila and a movie maker from California named Devin Stanfield ended up getting mining claims on the site. After drilling hundreds of feet and dynamiting their way toward where they believed the treasure was, Stanfield and Davila had an altercation. Davila was kicked off the site and banned from excavating. Two men named Dwayne Neely and Wilford White were determined to finish the job. They had been helping Davila as volunteers at the site, and when Davila was banned, they decided to dynamite the site one last time to try to reach the supposed chamber that they believed they were getting closer to. After blasting the end of the shaft with dynamite, the two men waited as the dust and debris cleared before going into the shaft to inspect their progress. Neely's father lowered them into the shaft in a bucket that they rode in. The father became concerned after the rope went slack. He went into town to get help, but it was too late. Hours later, the men's bodies were retrieved from the shaft. They had died from carbon monoxide poisoning left over from the blast. This would not be the last death associated with the Chalk Creek hieroglyphs. Stanfield, the movie producer that had claims on the land, returned to the area in search of treasure. While working on the mine not far from the petroglyphs, he fell down the shaft into his death. The Chalk Creek hieroglyphs and the theories of treasure surrounding these carvings ended up inspiring a series of events that killed three people. All right, we are gaining elevation right now. Um, yeah, it's gonna be up here on this cliff face. 
somewhere actually probably behind this from what I've read it's a long ways up probably not gonna film much of this hike you gotta be careful out here it's a little slippery Ooh, this is gonna be tight I run about six foot five so I'm gonna have to Here they are. I first heard about the Western Message petroglyphs while browsing the YouTube channel of a gentleman named Terry Carter. He has several videos that discuss some of the theories of origin. Some of these theories propose that these could have been the writings of a member of a secret society. Secret societies are often associated with the use of secret symbology to communicate ideas and beliefs among members. The symbology is used as a way to identify members and as a means of transmitting messages and knowledge that is meant to be kept hidden from the outside world. Secret symbols and signs can take many forms, including hand gestures, cryptic tattoos, and complex logos. The use of symbology is an important part of the mystique surrounding secret societies and can serve to reinforce their sense of exclusivity and unity. It also allows them to express their ideas and beliefs in a way that is both discreet and easily recognizable to members, helping to maintain their secrecy and allow them to carry out their goals and missions with anonymity. The Knights Templar were a religious military order formed in the 12th century to protect Christian pilgrims traveling to the Holy Lands. They became one of the wealthiest and most powerful organizations in Europe and played a significant role in the Crusades. However, the order faced persecution in the early 14th century and was disbanded by the Pope in 1312. Despite their downfall, legends about the Knights Templar have persisted throughout the centuries. There are some that believe some members made it to America before Columbus. Proponents of this theory point to various clues and artifacts that they believe support the idea that the Templars explored and established settlements in the New World. Some believe that the Templars took their secrets and treasures with them to America, where they would have been safe from the persecution they faced in Europe. Many of the country's founding fathers, presidents, and important figures have been Freemasons. Freemasons were also a big part of the migration west during the 19th century of America. Is it possible that these petroglyphs were created as a code left behind for members of a secret society to interpret as they traveled west? Many of the Western Message petroglyph sites feature a symbol of an eye on or near the main panel. These symbols resemble the Egyptian weeping eye and are often located at the center of a handprint. This eye with the handprint is a symbol that can be found worldwide and is commonly referred to as a Hamza. Nowadays, the handprint at these sites have faded and can only be faintly seen at some of the locations. By using some tricks in Photoshop, you can make out the edges of a faint handprint in a photo of the eye located near Phoenix, Arizona. This site also shows an Egyptian Ankh as well as a cross that has widened endpoints, which resembles the Knights Templar cross symbol. There are a number of researchers who believe that these petroglyphs are a more modern creation due to their analysis of the locations of these petroglyphs and the types of symbology illustrated on the rocks. Two of the best researchers I found on this subject are Leigh Marymore, a research associate at the Museum of Northern Arizona, and Judy Hilbish, author of the book Stone Diary, Solving the Mystery of the Western Message Petroglyphs. Both of these researchers' work deserves attention, and I highly recommend anyone interested in diving further on the subject read Stone Diary by Hilbish. 
Lay Merrymore published his latest work on the Western message petroglyphs in early 2023, titled Western Message Petroglyphs, a faux Indian picture writing project in the American West. I'll do my best to summarize the publication, which I believe paints a possible timeline for when these were created. The original discoveries of many of these sites were often found in isolation, without knowing that the others existed all over the West and had been discovered throughout the 20th and 21st century. When the internet came along, it allowed petroglyph enthusiasts to start putting two and two together. As time went on and more information poured in online, researchers started to realize that there were more and more of these mystery petroglyphs being discovered. Today, there are over 39 sites that have been discovered in eight different states, and there are likely more that will be discovered in the future. In Leigh Merrimore's 2023 publication, he points out that one of the distinctive aspects of Western Message petroglyph sites is their association with historic travel routes from the Western expansion period. The sites are often in remote overlooks that are within view of the routes of travel, but far enough away that they remain somewhat hidden. Incredible view up here. It's like Cedar City right here. Most of the messages can be found in a location that is close to the towns, mines, and quarries that experienced growth and decline during the Great Migration out west. Many of these sites correspond to the Mormon cultural landscape, with over half of them overlooking the Mormon towns and historic Mormon travel routes. As Leigh Mary Moore studied the Western Message petroglyphs, he noticed that several of the symbols were similar to those in a publication made by Lieutenant Garrick Mallory who had worked on documenting Native American sign language and picture writing from 1877 to 1893. This is considered by Mary Moore to be the smoking gun and gives a possible timeline as to when these messages were created. Whoever created these had a learned knowledge of Native American as well as Egyptian, Mayan, Chinese, and other Old World symbology and combined them to create their own message. While studying universal Indian sign language and picture writing of different Native American groups, Mallory found it very curious how similar some of the Native American gestures and picture writings were to other worldwide symbols that can be found from outside North America. The reproduction of gesture lines in the pictographs made by our Indian seems to have been most frequent in the attempt to convey those subjective ideas which were beyond the range of an artistic skill limited to the direct representation of objects, so that the part of the pictographs, which is still the most difficult of interpretation, is precisely the one which the study of sign language is likely to elucidate. In this connection, it may be mentioned that a most interesting result has been obtained in the tentative comparison so far made between the gesture signs of our Indian and some of the characters in the Chinese, Assyrian, Mexican, and runic alphabets or syllabary, and also with the Egyptian hieroglyphics. At a site on Lookout Mountain near Del Norte, Colorado, there's a Western message petroglyph that depicts many of the standard symbols that can be found at other Western message petroglyph panels. At the site in Del Norte, there's what appears to be a lone mountain lion below the main part of the panel. According to Western message petroglyph researcher Terry Carter, Locals in that area claim that the petroglyphs were already there when their Spanish ancestors settled the area in the 1700s. Out of all the Western Message petroglyph sites that I visited, this one was the hardest to find. I had very rough directions from a book titled Rock Art of the San Luis Valley that I had stumbled upon at a museum in Alamosa, Colorado. Forgive the heavy breathing. I'm at really high elevation right now. El Norte is pretty high up here. This is pretty incredible. I didn't even know this existed. You know, I'd been to Cedar City and Fillmore, Utah to see those hieroglyphs about 10 days ago. I've been stuck in the San Luis Valley due to bad weather over the east frontier there, headed toward Kansas. Went to the museum the other day and started reading a book about petroglyphs in the valley. This book was written a long time ago. The photos were all black and white. 
and I found that petroglyph there. I said, whoa, those are matching. What's that doing in the St. Louis Valley? So here I am trying to find this thing. It gave very difficult to interpret directions. I think this is going to be very hard to find. We'll see if I can pull it off. I'm gonna to try to find this thing, but I'm not gonna lie, first glance that looks a little sketchy. We will not be sacrificing safety for this one, but I'm at the top. Let's see if we can find this thing. All right, this is gonna be like finding a needle in a haystack, but we're already here, so. We might as well try. I don't even know if this is a trail anymore, but let's go find this thing. Not even sure if I'll post this, but unfortunately I failed today. This is a, uh, you might not be able to tell, but this is pretty steep right here. And I don't think I should advance any further. After searching for two days along the steep cliff sides on Lookout Mountain, I decided to give up. As I hiked down the mountain with feelings of defeat, I ran into a local named Deborah Romero. She noticed me climbing along the cliffs and asked what I was looking for. I explained to her that there was a very strange petroglyph that I was there to investigate and I was having trouble locating it. It was Christmas Eve and it was time for me to return to Kansas to be with my family. Deborah, who's an experienced rock climber and has climbed every 14,000 foot peak in the state of Colorado, offered to help out. We exchanged contact information and the next day I had a message waiting in my inbox with these amazing photos. Out of all of the Western message petroglyph sites that I am aware of, this seems to be one of the most extreme locations. The author would have had to stand on a very small ledge on this steep cliff. A special thanks to Deborah Romero for taking the time and effort to capture these photos. In a 2021 presentation given by researcher Leigh Merrimore on the ARARA channel, Merrimore offers translations for several of the panels across the West, including the Del Norte site, which is the furthest Eastern Western message petroglyph that can be found, at least yet. A possible translation of the petroglyph reads as follows, Men, go. Great life, I say. Man not, walk, swiftly, pause. One night, chief conflict. Or in other words, the man who travels a great distance in life, I say, is the man who is not walking swiftly. Chief one night's contention. This translation was given by Mary Moore in the 2021 video that I mentioned above. There has been great progress made on the Western message petroglyph mystery thanks to the efforts of Terry Carter, Leigh Mary Moore, Judy Hilbish, and other researchers. There are still many questions that are left unanswered. Who exactly carved these? Were these intended to be deciphered? If so, how many people understood the picture writing? If they weren't meant to be deciphered, why were they written? Were the locations of the writings chosen at random or were they important? I believe that it is likely there are far more Western message petroglyphs out there to be discovered. With a growing curiosity surrounding the petroglyphs, I think that we might just see more discoveries of Western Message Petroglyph sites in the coming years. This episode was a chapter from my book, Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History. I traveled all around the world to photograph, film, and research these subjects. And if you'd like to support my work, please consider buying the actual book that is linked in the description. Stay tuned for chapter three, episode three, where we ask the question, did ancient Celts make it to North America? Celtic Ogham is an ancient script that was used by Celts thousands of years ago and can still be found in Ireland today. This is also referred to as the Celtic tree alphabet. Over the last half century, independent researchers have been studying similar markings that can be found throughout North America. In the spring and summer of 2022, I traveled to West Virginia, Colorado, and Oklahoma to document the sites and witness some remarkable archaeoastronomy associated with two of these petroglyphs on the spring equinox. 
Did ancient Celtic explorers make it to America long before Columbus and the Spanish arrived? Please ring that notification bell and stay tuned for Chapter 2, Episode 2, American Petroglyphs that Resemble Celtic Ogham. <laughs>